This is a tutorial on how to use GIMP, a free image editing software, to do two simple improvements to your digital camera photos. The first thing we're going to do is go over here to the, it's called the rectangular select tool, it's just a cropping, a rectangular cropping tool. Come over here and just box this. We'll just try one just to kind of show you Okay, what I'm going to do here right now is I'm, I'm selecting an area I'm going to trim down to. And what I'm going to try to do is follow the, um, the rule of thirds, which is just a simple composition that if you have points of interest like the deer's head and eyes um, on a third line in your photo, uh, the composition is better. Uh, you know, either people's heads or th th things of interest. And by the third line, I mean is uh, here's one third down, there's a line all the way across, another third down, another line all the way across. You're just doing this in your mind and doing it by eyeball. And then from left to right, here's a third here, well actually a little further over here, and here's a third here. And the idea is, is let's get this top third and the right third to uh, lined across more or less just by eyeball on the, on the deer's head and then just kind of size everything else to accordingly. Uh, let's see here, like that, like that, maybe pull this in a little further so we kind of get it here. Now I'm going to basically cheat here <coughs> to just show you what we're trying to do. You do it by eyeball, I do it by eyeball, but I'm just going to show you what, um, I'm going to turn on something that I've Here's a grid, and uh, just to show you principle involved, I'm going to move that down and just okay. Now you don't you don't use this method to crop your picture, but it's just to show you what. Okay, let's see. Let's go back here and uh, turn that off again. But you you see here that. Uh, there's the there's the crop marks that we made, and then here's this grid. It's you know not exact on, but this is this is not exact stuff. You're doing it by eye. This is just to show you the principle. See, here's the third line. Here's another third line. So we're pretty close to what this grid would you know have it be. Uh, but you know here, third line, third line, another third line for the strong, uh, you know the body, the deer's body. But we have problems. The problem is, is cropping it this way, we've got the reflection in the window, uh, of the window. So uh, what we'll go do is uh, crop the other side. So let's just get rid of the cheat grid you wouldn't have anyway. And uh, let's see, turn the selection off by, here's selection, and then just go none. So we're back to the start again. So grab the box. And this time we're going to go the other direction. Same idea, the other side of the photo. So, of the image. So here we go. Try to get about it. Uh, let's see, third here. Like a third here, third here line. Um, okay, and one third here, another third here. Maybe back this up a little more. Third here, third here, maybe a little more, because okay. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to stretch all the way out to the other side of the tree. Uh, there's one third, one third, one third, one third, maybe. You know, see, this is just it's just eyeball, eyeball, and that's that's all. Okay, that's uh, you know, I think that's pretty close. Now let's turn on this grid that you would not have just to illustrate the principle and drag that over and let's just see okay it lines up pretty close you see there's the crop marks of uh, you know that's a crop box that I've selected 
and you can see how it's it's pretty close. There's this the third line, strong vertical line here, the third line, the bottom third line here. Another thing, the composition. You see how this line is pretty close to the horizon. So it you know when you're trimming a picture or taking a picture, better have the horizon up here or down here. You know, and not, it's not s best to not just split the middle, but either have more ground in your shot with the horizon up there or more sky in your shot with the ground down here. It just helps with the composition. It's very simple rules. So, eyeball, it's looking better. So, go ahead and go over to image and crop to selection. And there we go. And I'm going to expand this just a little bit to bring the um, oh, bring the um, yeah, they have to fill the image to fill the screen here a little bit so you can see it. So there we go. <coughs> Better composed shot. And deer's reaching for the tree, and we can actually see the whole tree cropping this way. And the the reflections from the window are gone off on the side. And we've got some, you know, kind of got an arc here. And um, I recommend that at this point you stop the tutorial and go get one of your digital camera photos and crop it. Yeah, make sure that you are altering a copy or that you save under a different file name. Don't change the original. Okay, now you've either cropped an image of your own or you've decided to press on regardless. Now we're going to do a contrast and brightness and color type of adjustment with something called a histogram. You go to colors and you go to levels and this is called a levels type of adjustment adjust color levels but what this is is a histogram and these are all the pixels in your photo that are plotted on a graph all of them in here are plotted on this graph according to how <coughs> bright or dark they are way over here is 255 is maxed out brightness way on the right hand side and way down on this other end here is zero and your all your pictures are falling here all, all the way across up here is the whites which are right in this area and down here these are the darks like way up here underneath this tree or if I pull this down for a moment you know the darkest area is maybe in here so that's how basically how it works pretty simple stuff so what you can do is this this slider controls where the brightest point you know the brightest setting the, the brightest pixels and what you can do is you can take this slider and slide it down and you can see the the photograph brightening up because now your brightest pixels in the shot the brightest pixels are fully up to 255 it's pushing the brightness of these pixels up as we change the scale here, we move the sliders in. And the same thing with the darks. The dark part of the picture, the black. Now see the, no, the black, so it's going, the darkest pixels are now are almost zero. So it gives us a better dynamic range. And you can see the difference. I can, I can show you the difference by, if you reset it, you notice you lose your, some contrast. So this is a quick way to improve contrast brightness of your shot without blowing out the whites which is easy to do you know you start in fact you have to watch it if you if you crank this thing down you can you see we're beginning to blow out the whites and you don't want to do that that's why you and that's what ends up happening if you just use a contrast and brightness adjustment you can easily blow out part of your photo if you don't know what to look for it's just done and uh so there's, anyway, there's another way to do this, and this is a composite value. Uh, what you can do is you can do the c colors individual, re red, red, green, blue. So we'll go to the red one. And this is a little bit different than the composite that we just worked on. and But we do the same thing. So pull in so that the reddest part, the reddest pixels are now full scale red 
and do the same thing down here. Let me uh, close. So there we go. It's, we've, it, we've got a pinkish shoe over the whole thing. But if we, if we go to the green, if we go, if we do the, if we do the green, take the slider, push it in, do the same thing. Then it begins to change again. And then we go to blue and repeat. And there, you see now, with this uh, with this adjustment, your colors are going to be brighter, more intense, and uh, you know the colors, uh, the uh, contrast of the photo. Same thing, but this time you've done each different color channel separately. I like the method better. Um, for other reasons I won't go into, but I like the method better. Although you do have to, you know, you're going to have to look at your own photo to see if it's, you know, to start, if you have something that begins to look unnatural or something like that. But I'm just going to press OK here, and uh, the photo to me looks fine, looks improved. And I'll show you a little bit of, uh, just to undo. And there it is before, and redo it. <laughs> after so it's improved you've got a better composition you've got better um, you've got better color and it's ready to send off to family post on the social media now the last thing is to just file file this thing under a different file name you don't want to use the same file name keep your originals so in this situation with GIMP you want to export because save saves in the GIMP proprietary format which works fine, but not everything can see that. And uh, if you're working and you want to stop halfway through and save something else, save in the GIMP format because that saves a lot of information about your. It saves more information about your what you're doing, your work layers and things like that. We're going to just right here just export to a JPEG. Okay, here's the finished product, cropped for composition, adjusted for better brightness, contrast, color, and ready to use.